Good morning. On behalf of the Knaresborough Team Ministry, we extend to you a very warm welcome to our online service for this, the first Sunday in Lent. We hope and trust that you are all keeping safe and well, and that a little spring-like weather this week has lifted your spirits. It's been quite a week, hasn't it? With St Valentine's Day last Sunday, followed by Shrove Tuesday, with all those delicious pancakes, and then Ash Wednesday. Have you given anything up for Lent this year, I wonder? Perhaps you feel we've given up enough already. Or maybe you have instead taken something on. It isn't too late to join in the Zoom Lent course, which starts on Wednesday evening. Have a look at the pew sheet if you're interested. Those of you who attended the Ash Wednesday service on Zoom will know that it was rather different this year. I remember many Ash Wednesday services I've attended in the past when our children were young. When I got home from church, all four would tell me in turn, Mum, you've got a dirty mark on your forehead. Or, Mum, how did you get that mark on your face? And I would try to explain in simple terms that the dirty mark was actually a cross signed on my forehead in ash to remind me of my mortality and of my being named for Christ at my baptism. Remarkably, this seemed to happen year in and year out. Mum, did you know you have a dirty mark on your face? Nowadays, it's my husband who notices. But not this year. No one can see the virtual cross on my forehead that I signed on myself in the service. But I know it's there, and it can't be washed off either. I can still feel it, and it feels good. What an amazing start to Lent. Let us begin our worship in prayer. Heavenly Father, gracious, loving God, on this first Sunday of Lent, we come together seeking your presence, offering our worship and asking for your mercy and guidance. We come as we are, remembering Christ's baptism by John and our own baptism, the vows made on our behalf or of our own accord to resist the temptation of evil, the signing of the cross on our foreheads, naming us for Christ. We come as we are, hearing again your affirmation of Jesus as your beloved Son, and through your grace can know once more your love for us as your precious sons and daughters. We come as we are, remembering the temptations of Christ in the wilderness and his refusal to give in, those forty days and nights of trial and the attendance of the angels. We come as we are, with all our faults and weaknesses, knowing that only by your grace can we be as you would have us be. Heavenly Father, gracious God, help us to use this season of Lent wisely, a time for repentance and reflection on the good news of the Gospels. Open our hearts as we come to you today and let your amazing, unconditional love come in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen.
the collect for the first Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark, chapter 1, beginning at the ninth verse. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. I like that gospel reading today. It reminds me about the joy of baptisms and one of the sadnesses over this last year has been we've not been able to do baptisms. At a previous church, whenever we had a baptism, we would always say that baptism marks the start of a journey and the baptism families would love it because we had a big screen and a PowerPoint on. And as we mentioned that baptism marks the start of a journey, the face of their little child, the photo that they'd sent in, suddenly would pop up on the screen right in the middle of a little car. And it looked like they were driving. So it looked like a great image for that child for their life. And it was a good metaphor as well as a good image. Because the reality is, that baptism does mark the start of a journey. It marked a start of a journey for Jesus and it marks the start of our spiritual journeys too. And those are journeys of commitment. We say yes to Jesus as our saviour and friend. They're journeys of faith. We don't always know where the journey will take us, but we trust and have faith in God who makes the journey with us. They're journeys of transformation. Our faith journey is one that lasts a lifetime and over time we change, we grow closer to God and we learn about ourselves. We make changes, hopefully, so that we can become more like Jesus, to be the beloved child of God that we were created to be. And most importantly, they are journeys of love. As we make our journey, we learn more, I hope, about God, the God who loves us, who sent his son to love us and die for us. And we learn to love others just as he loves others. As Jesus said, the two most important commandments were to love God and to love our neighbour as ourself. And so at Lent, God invites us on that journey to use this time to reflect on who we are and our faith, our journey, and to love and to be loved. And love really does need to be our focus because Lent can, if we let it, simply become a sort of 40 day self-improvement course, a sort of self-control test. Can I do without X, Y and Z? And if I'm honest, over the years, I'm not really convinced that those seasons of Lent where I gave up wine or crisps or chocolate or cheese or whatever it was, were the things that grew my faith or my love nor anyone else's. In fact, those sort of penitential things, those things of giving up, can actually be a distraction from the real task, that of a committed, transforming journey of faith and love. 
if we aren't careful, Lent can be reduced to being all about us and what I'm doing, giving up for God. What's hard is making it about Jesus, shifting our focus from the what we do to the who we're called to do it all for. This year, I'm not giving up anything. Perhaps over lockdown, I've just given up a lot already. And instead, I'm going to be journeying with others in our churches and around a diocese to find a new rhythm of life, to support and grow my faith and love as part of our Lent course. So I'm hoping that in doing this, I will actually be taking something on that starts and continues to transform me. It involves six weeks of thinking about my spiritual practice and what can change, what can lead me into a deeper, closer relationship with God. What can, as Paul suggests, change me from glory into glory and help me to love like Jesus loves. And I would invite all of you, please come and join us on our Lent journey. The theologian P.T. Forsyth said this, Christ could be tempted because he loved and he could not sin because he loved so deeply. It was the spirit of love that led Jesus into the desert. And it's that same spirit of love that is poured out upon us at our baptisms and the same spirit who longs to fill us day in, day out. So I hope that our Lenten journeys will be full of that spirit of love and that we will encounter God in a new way, a way that refreshes us, restores us and heals us. A love that tells us that we are chosen and forgiven and a love that sets us free to love others and forgive others as deeply and as boldly as God loves and forgives them. Amen. And so let us pray. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin 
and through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we are at the beginning of Lent, so we pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive his inestimable gifts and also daily endeavour to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we remember our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world, especially those who may be suffering persecution or intimidation because they are followers of him. And we remember before God those who are working both here at home and in other countries to spread the good news of the gospel. Bless, we beseech you, the work of Christian Aid and of Tear Fund and all other Christian organisations. And we pray particularly for CMS and our own mission partner Azaria in Guatemala, from whom we heard so movingly last Sunday that she may be continually strengthened in her faith and may all of us who, re who have received the good news in Jesus Christ have our hearts filled with thankfulness that we may show in our lives the glad tidings which we have received. And as we have prayed for ourselves, so we pray for our country and our fellow citizens, especially at this time of pandemic and stress and anxiety for many. Remember for good, O Lord, the griefs and perils of this and every land, the necessities of the homeless, the helplessness of the weak, the sighing of prisoners, the pains of the sick and injured, the sorrows of the bereaved. Relieve them, O merciful Father, according to their several needs, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we think particularly of children and young people whose lives have been so disrupted, but for whom there is now some hope that they soon will be able to enjoy the normal pleasures of youth. Bless, O Lord, our schools, colleges and universities. Enlighten with your wisdom those who teach and those who learn, that they all may rejoice in true learning and knowledge. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we give thanks that it has been possible for scientists and clinicians to develop vaccines and drugs which give hope for the future. O God, the giver of wisdom, grant that with every increase of knowledge service may be rendered to all peoples throughout the world, and as your eternal purposes may be set forward in this way. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we draw our prayers together in the prayer which our Lord himself taught us and say in the traditional form, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the 
power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, thank you for taking the time to watch our service this morning. I pray that you may have a blessed and holy Lent. It's far too early to say for certain, but we are hoping, hoping to be back in our churches open for worship uh, before Easter or certainly around the time of Easter. Obviously, there's a lot of things to take into account. We need to make sure that the numbers of those infected continues to fall and we also need to take guidance and seek guidance from our diocesan bishop but it would be lovely to think that we could be back in church uh, if not before then certainly on Easter Sunday but in the meantime we spend this season of Lent in reflection reflection upon our lives upon our faith and our spirituality so as our service now draws to its conclusion Let's just bow our heads for the conclusion and the dismissal. This 
is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son, he is the sacrifice for our sins, that we might live through him. If God loves us so much, we ought to love one another. If we love one another, God lives in us. And the blessing. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you the season of Lent and always. God bless. Take care. Stay well.